Mr. Speaker, today I rise in opposition to HB 2388. This is an example of a piecemeal attempt to micromanage the governmental response to this crisis. And we in the legislature are ill-suited to be making sector-by-sector -sector decisions as each, each of these sectors operate in silos that are disconnected from the rest of society. We cannot assume that business is conducted in the same way all across the state. From my perspective, as a legislator from a district tucked away on the Delaware River, with neighborhoods that feel forgotten by my own city, Philadelphia, and even more forgotten by this body in Harrisburg, I'm going to read you a letter that I just received from a constituent. And she writes... Please, please suspend, sir. I apologize. Yes, sir. Members, the good gentleman is entitled to be heard. He's going to be reading uh, as part of his remarks from a constituent. Please give him the courtesy of being heard. Legislators in an unnamed outlying county wish to reopen the economy. They are driven by a small group of loud Pennsylvanians. All of us are suffering right now, and while everyone would like to see a return to normalcy, we do not believe the defiance of the governor's emergency declaration will get us there. We are patient. We will come back from this because we are Pennsylvania. This is from my constituent. So, Mr. Cr Speaker, during this crisis, I've been feeling out of sorts and frustrated. And that's not just because I'm on my 59th straight bad hair day. I'm feeling frustrated because things just don't feel right. And we all know this. It doesn't feel right that I've only seen my parents four times in their, driving way for the their driveway for the last four two months. It doesn't feel right that we're celebrating Easter and Mother's Day and birthdays through a computer screen or drive-by parades. It doesn't feel right that I have to deliver food to people in my district because they are afraid to leave their homes. It doesn't feel right that we're honoring health care workers on the front lines, but not guaranteeing them PPE. It doesn't feel right that what should have been a joint struggle in this chamber for the greater good has become an argument that pits lives against livelihoods. Now, Mr. Speaker, I see that we are juggling responsibilities, and I see three basic ones. Public health on one hand, the economy on the other, and the third and most important is public confidence and trust. We've been fighting over the first two while we're losing the sight of the fact that it's the third one that our constituents need from us more than anything else. Now, I know how to juggle, and when I was learning how to juggle, the hardest thing for me to absorb was the fact that there was a point where I had to let one ball go up in the air and trust that I had given just the right flick of the wrist to have it land in the other hand. Our current situation, I feel like we have been holding too hard and fast to our responsibilities. The economy in the right hand and public health in the left and we're not letting go. And the result is the ball in the middle, the confidence of the people, is continually being dropped at our feet. Now, in the spirit of helping us try to pick up that ball and get moving again, I want to make a simple suggestion. We need to listen to one of the key constituencies that was not a part of crafting this legislation our frontline workers. We shouldn't be talking about workers wanting to do something without including them in the conversations. Recently, this was reinforced from, for all of us when we received a letter from the president of the Pennsylvania AFL-CIO that literally said, workers must have a say at every level of a reopening. Mr. Speaker, our workers understand that decisions to reopen the economy are not made in individual silos like barbershops, real estate offices, car dealers, 
garden centers or dog groomers or our man manufacturing centers. Reopening requires the movement and transportation and connected goods and services that also need to be reactivated with any plan. And that plan has to be central, unified, and a combined strategy that we all contribute to. The necessary consumer and societal confidence is going to be the result if we do that right. Now, I'm going to give you one final thing, a, a little bit of perspective from my district in Philadelphia. A decision to reopen has to include a, a specific plan that will address mass transit, because a large portion of our workforce in Philadelphia that provides a disproportionate amount of the tax revenue coming into the, the state's coffers, that workforce has to travel by public transit up to two hours every day. That means two hours a day on the market Frankfurt L going through my district. Now, my, Mr. Speaker, I grew up taking the Frankfurt L to school and then to work as an adult, and we stood shoulder to shoulder with my fellow Philadelphians. Hey, we even had a song for it. It went like, you can't get to heaven, you can't get to heaven on the Frankfurt L, because the Frankfurt L goes straight to Frankfurt. Now, my colleague from Lebanon County has observed that we are in a different pandemic here in the southeastern corner of the state because we are in tight quarters. But it's these differences that actually require us and reinforce the need for a cohesive, comprehensive plan, not piecemeal, sector-by-sector -sector concessions. Now, Mr. Speaker, to, con to close, I'm concerned that the current legislation does not properly listen to our frontline workers, those that are closest to the public health threat that COVID-19 presents, and does not provide for the proper balance of our responsibilities to provide confidence to the people of the entire Commonwealth, along with our economic and public health. So I ask my colleagues to remember, we are all in this together, and to vote no on HB 2388, so that we can take time, step back, and together with the administration and our colleagues in the Senate, develop a better solution that listens to every voice, not just the loudest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.